Hello everybody, welcome back to Biolattice. I've gone into the settings and reset my indicators to be show when recommended. And we made progress in coming not through here, double arrows, this one. We made progress last time working our way into this section and we have these bracketed areas. So I figure why not try and make some progress here today. Tilt, all threes, but this arrow is pointing up right to here. So, how are we going to get all of these corners to work? Because that'll do it for those. Wait. <laughs> Alright, so we've got these guys counting that one. This one is also counting that one. And the three at the bottom. I'll take it. Tilt two. Well, that's going to be a little more intricate, isn't it? Well, that's three. That's sixes, and then this is one, two, three. Not four, but that cuts off the corner for four. Simple enough. Tilt three. Right, three, five, three, five. We do one, two, three, and one, two, three. And this is going to be one, two, three, four, five. But the negative version, or the inverse version of the puzzle should still work. So even if I do things this way, does this actually help me make the fives bigger? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six doesn't work. Because the, the level almost looks like it wants to be symmetrical, but it's not. So that solves the threes. Because those aren't pointing that way. So I feel like this has to be the case for the threes. One, two, three. That's interesting that that works for you. Because you go one, two, three, four, five. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. But then that helps to you to count back around this corner. Is there some other way I can do the threes? Or are the threes kind of locked in as they are? Well, yeah, we can do something like this, where it's just counting the single empty tile in front of it. But that works far less well in the opposing direction. No, I suppose it does. Um, but this five is kind of cordoned off now. There's very little I can do with it. Because this being unlit makes the threes into fours, which is no good. There's something there, but not the right thing I don't think one two three four five but that breaks the threes I can't see what to do with these fives and I can't get these threes to count in any other direction. Two, three, four, five, but I can't make this larger. Is it the case that the inverse of this puzzle 
works differently. Am I going mad? If that works, then that works too. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it's not. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes this five work. One, two, three. Can I make the fives work in some kind of ladder? Counting more stuff upwards as they go. This is going to go one, two, three, four, five. That does technically work. Does screw my threes over though. One, two, three, four, five. That also works. But it did not in a way that seems helpful. So these seem to be the only way to get both threes to work. It feels. And I can swap which five is successful here. One, two, three, four, five sends that round in a circle, but the threes are unhappy. Not sure on that one. Let's see what's happening on the lower side. Double arrows, flow skipping. One, two, three, four, five. And this needs one, two, three. If I do that, this goes one, two, three, four, five, which is no good. How do I get the three to be okay with this? like that. So the four bifurcates the two sections, the threes independent at the top, and then the five goes one, two, three, four, five after skipping over one row. Oh goodness. How can this skip over rows if it's skipping off the board? I'm unsure how that would be intended to work. One, two, three, four, and nothing else. This three doesn't have enough. How does this four? One, two, three, four. Okay, and this double arrow here is cutting off the space for the three in the top left. So this goes one, two, three and then stops counting because it goes to reach for a vacant, like a, a non-existent space. So it just helps bifurcate these two sections. Because this goes one, two, three, stop. Flow skipping three. That seemed simple enough. We just take the fives and group them all together into a group of five and then the threes left alone, ignoring the double arrows. Lots happening here. This two can never interact with this arrow because they are too far removed from one another. This five can pick up those. This three can exist alone. This two, though, gets left out of the equation. anything else we can do this five is happy like this this two well there you go this two needed to be alone so i bifurcated it away from these two and then this three goes one 
two and hops over to the empty gap below and the two on the left is just a domino. Ring one with a try solution button. So we're hopping over the gaps here, which is interesting. So we can do one, two, three. Then this five is one, two, three, four, five. This three is one, two, and three, and this four is broken. One, two, three. Okay, so these don't join together. So if we do that, one, two, three, four, five. But this two can't exist like that. What else can we work with? This four could be one, two, three, four. This three is one, two, three. That's fine. This three can be one, two, three. That's also fine. Then over here, one, two, three, four, five. I think this is it. No, this five still doesn't work. Five, one, two, three. It doesn't connect to this, does it? Of course. Um, and if I do this, everything breaks. So what can I do with this five differently? That breaks a lot of stuff that I would much rather not be broken, obviously. Two's here. If I do this, this works. This is now one, two, three, four. If I do this, this three definitely breaks. This 5-2 combo that is messing me up. Is this 5 because it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, counts this again? Definitely not. So this 5 definitely has to pick up extra tiles from this double arrow. Because if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this double arrow stops us carrying on around the corner. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the least number of hops we can use to make the five that makes the two work this three is then not going to work like this breaks the five if i do that then this five is now one two three four five this three is one two three four This five is too large because it's picking up this arrow. So this and this and this have to be connected. We know that. Whether this five picks up... Oh, this five could pick up those. And then the two would be happy. Oh no, because the this five can't pass through the two arrows. So this tile is completely independent of this five. That works for the five and the two because the two counts once and counts back but doesn't cross around the corner. So can we use that and then make the rest of the left work correctly? That makes the three work. Hops over. This four is happy with one, two, three, four. What about this three? That makes the four work, but breaks this three. So this is one, two, three. Makes the three work. This three. Hey! So this three goes one, two, hops over. This four goes one, two, three, hops over for the fourth. Good stuff. 
So that puts us on ring two here. We have loads of arrows going around diagonally and vertically. No horizontal arrows. We do have a couple of ones which might help in figuring out what stuff is divided. Because stuff like this is going to help divide some of the ones out. But then the three... That three is happy. Okay. So this is on its own. This is pointing at this. This three is going one, two, and picking up the third. This six. One, two, three. No, it can't go past the arrows. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. But that breaks this three. Now this three is happy. This six is not. The five also not happy. So we've got some work to do on this right hand side. But the left hand side looks great. Whether it is or not is a whole other situation. This three is now broken. How can we do this six? This six can only count one further back. And then if it's going to carry on forward, it has to go one, two, three, four, five, six. This three is not attached to this. This five is now all alone. This three is now counting too high. Let's just follow this six around because there's only so much progress this six can make from where it is because it can't go backwards past this line. So if we work on an exclusive notion of going forwards only for the six, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. But this arrow makes it seven. So if we drop this arrow and pick this arrow up, the six is now fine. The three is also happy. If we grab the five, the three is no longer happy. If we unmatch those, we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is now happy. This one is not. If I do that, makes the one happy, breaks the six being happy. If I take this off and put this on, the one will now be happy. The three is no longer happy because we need to break that off. And then if we do that and that, no. One wants to be alone. If we make it alone, the three is unhappy. We need this to break up this situation. But this goes one, two, three. This one is on its own. Good round of logic on that one. Very happy. How about this one here? Oh my god callback I feel like there's going to be some real simple solution that's going to be like why did my brain know that would work that's what I want to know is it the symmetry is it when it says callback is it a callback to a previous puzzle that I knew what was going on here but hey I will take it does it work if you do it on the opposing stripes you assume it would right yeah well I will absolutely take it so that takes us back over to here where we had tilt going on that did not agree with my brain apparently. Have we learnt anything new? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. That makes both of those happy. Wait, is it just this? It is just that. Okay, great stuff. So. The, uh, the threes were the orientation that I thought it was. It was just making the fives count up together and then cordoning off the last piece. Tilt four. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Those now don't work for each other. That does. One, two... Okay, 
what can we do with the fours? One, two, three, four. That makes the two groups too large. Oh, there you go. So do the fours, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Then that gets the sixes that are in a section of four plus a section of two, gets them all sorted. Tilt five. Well, the two's gonna throw a spanner in the works, I'm sure. How are we going to get the threes and the twos to cooperate? Because you assume this has to be this and this. But then the two can't pick up an extra tile. Because the two is either going to be this or this. We can't do that to make this be cordoned in by the two. So what could be different? Could we do some kind of like scaling set of arrows? That makes all of that happy, which is interesting. But this is... Oh, we've made the three on the left. Their own group. By doing this. Now how can I make this three happy? Either of these, yep. So we go one, two, and then take that out as third. So it was just getting these three into a three by one on their own. Gives us our solution here. And then this is the last one in the section. Tilt six. We have to find our solution here. So... This influences that. This influences this, influences this after this. So that makes five by going one, two, three, four, five. The five's happy. Then this three. If I do that, this five is now giant, so that doesn't work any longer. Is there another way for me to do this five? That would work too, sure. Just figuring out where the rest of the numbers contribute. Or in the corner, surrounded by arrows, so this is going to have to have some arrows contributing one way or another. And it's either going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 is valid. Or 1, 2, 3 and a fourth. But that break... Oh, that makes the 3 happy. It doesn't break the 3 because the 3 picks up the arrow and then stops running backwards. So can we use that and then something else on the left? Because this looks good in general. Like, this is pleasing as the thought of being part of the solution. So, one, can't do this because it breaks the three. That could be a problem. But these are just going to keep counting one another regardless of how they're shaded, right? Which is a problem, I think. That is an interesting problem. So let's just think about this four here. If I want it to be independent of everything, I have to do that so it doesn't start picking up the trail of arrows. Because if the arrows are different colors along the way, this will continue to pick them up regardless of how they're shaded. This goes one, two, three, four, five, but this isn't connected to those because it points off the board. So no matter how we shade those arrows, we are always counting them as a space. That breaks the three in the corner, but does make the four work. Uh, 
That is an interesting, interesting problem. So that four is done. That four is done. This three. Can't do that or this. Because that picks up everything else around it. And then it's the five that seems to going to be either having the most or the least impact owing to how the arrows go. Because I don't think this five and three can share a border. But this five... If we do that. This goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So that doesn't work. This three is now happy though, which is interesting. I can't imagine how you design these kinds of puzzles to have like all of the correct bits of logic and none of the incorrect like solutions, but unintended solutions or not unintended solutions. That makes the five happy, but not the three. That makes the three happy because we count one, two, three here. This is going one, two, three, four, five. So that's no longer good. One, two, three, four, five, six is not good. I need to lose some more of this space, but one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Four, not good. Three, not good. There's so much going on. What else can we stop and look at independently? This three I haven't really found a good solution for yet. Because this tile then connects to this arrow and this arrow, which makes for lots of additional tiling I don't want. One, two, three, four, five, or five, but the three breaks. That makes the three work because we count one, two, and three across. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six doesn't work far too large but I don't know how to get this 5 and this 4 to work at the same time because this 5 doesn't care whether these are illuminated or not which probably is going to be important for some of the other letters numbers these are numbers so this 5 once we do this, it's happy. So then we can start to manipulate other stuff in its own right. So this three, if we do that, is now happy. This four, one, two, three, four. But if we do this, this four is now happy. Okay, can we make this work? One, two one two three four that works no it doesn't one two three four five six that's why if i uncheck this this is now working to four which is not good one two three four five 
one, two, three, four. That works. The three is broken. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this three really doesn't like that, does it? What can I do with the three? And then down here, if we were to try and just keep this ball rolling, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, which is clearly no good. So this three hates everything about this. That it likes. Okay. Three in the top left corner. What can I change without breaking everything? This three is just in a zone of three on its own. This four is on its own and counting three arrows. If I change those arrows, it doesn't care. Same with this five. This five is going one, two, three, four arrows plus itself. This three is currently going one, two, three, four, five, six, which is no good. If I undo this, this four breaks, but this three is now happy. And if we do that, this four and this three are no longer happy. I can't remember how I had it to make the four happy a second ago. One, two, three. One, two. I don't know. I've got myself confused. This three existed on its own. That way. Okay. So that three was in a chevron. This three is. What if we do that? I think that's it, because now this just goes one, two, three, and then counts off the board. Hey, you love to see it. All right, well, we have more stuff over here and, of course, plenty of other puzzles in other places. But for now, that is a really good stopping point. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.